Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You can tell who professional gamblers believe have the best chance of making it to the Super Bowl simply by looking at the futures props being offered by Las Vegas casinos. Right now understand there are only four teams, literally only four teams in all of football right now that you would get at shorter odds than 16 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Right? The Philadelphia Eagles are at 16 to 1 right now to win the Super Bowl. There are four teams ahead of them according to the casinos. And believe it or not, you can't get better than four and a half to one on any of the four. Let's count them down. You want to make a note of this, right? Today is December the 8th, 2014. According to Vegas, from numbers four to one, the fourth team are the Seattle Seahawks. Right now they're going off at 4.5 to one to win the Super Bowl. The third team are the New England Patriots. They're going off at four to one to win the Super Bowl. The second team, according to the casinos, are the Denver Broncos. They're going off at 3.75 to one to win the Super Bowl. And the team right now that's favored to win the Super Bowl are the Green Bay Packers. They're going off at 3.5 to one. Right, apart from these four teams, the next team is at 16 to one. Right, so Vegas feels these are the top four. Let me make a few points. Now, while I personally believe that the Seattle Seahawks might be the best team in the NFC. Understand that Seattle doesn't lead their division right now. In fact, let's get deeper. Understand that Green Bay right now isn't the top seed in the NFC. Right? If the Arizona Cardinals, who won their 10th game yesterday, run the table for the rest of the playoffs, they're the number one seed in the NFC. Right? And so it's a bit staggering that two other teams would be getting such shorter rods than the Arizona Cardinals. Keep in mind, folks, the Super Bowl's in Arizona this year. Keep in mind, one of the trademarks of the Cardinals is their defense. You're talking about one of the NFL's best defenses, and you're talking about a team right now that has a realistic shot of getting the home field advantage in the NFC. Right? So I don't like the situation right now. Not the teams, but the situation right now presented by a futures bet on the Green Bay Packers. Right? I expect the Packers to beat up on the Atlanta Falcons at home right? later today. But I don't like the situation. Why am I getting such short odds when a different team right now has the inside track on winning the conference? Right Now the Seahawks, I fully expect the Seahawks to manhandle the San Francisco 49ers this coming weekend. Right, But that said, the Seahawks don't lead their own division. Isn't it perilous? Really? Getting a plus 450 for a team that's going to have to be a wild card team unless Arizona crumbles. Now let's look at Arizona's record right now. Let's look at their remaining games. You got a huge game this weekend. It's huge. It's Arizona at St. Louis. St. Louis has been playing awfully good football, no question about it. St. Louis has a pretty good defense, no question about it. 
right? But understand, St. Louis is not one of the league's elite teams. In fact, if you just go by the odds, understand that only the minutes, well, put it this way, St. Louis right now is 500 to 1. Think about it. 500 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. You're getting shorter odds on teams like the Cleveland Browns and the Carolina Panthers. Right? You're getting much shorter odds on those teams. So Arizona at St. Louis, I would argue, that's winnable. I'm not saying Arizona wins that game, but I'm saying it's winnable. Understand, if they win that game, that gets them to 11 wins. The week after that, they play Seattle. That's going to be a tough game. No question about it. But understand, Arizona plays Seattle at Arizona. They close the season playing San Francisco in San Francisco. But let's be real about that game. That game likely will be the last game of the Jim Harbaugh era in San Francisco. Right, San Francisco right now is in disarray. Certain players, Vernon Davis, former pro bowler, aren't even active parts of the offense. How do we know San Francisco is even going to make the effort the last week of the season since they'd be playing for a lame duck coach on a team where the owner has already apologized for the team's Thanksgiving performance the team just lost this week. Think about it. They followed up Thanksgiving by losing to their crosstown rival Oakland Raiders. Understand, the Raiders went into that game with only one win. Understand, a rookie quarterback, Derek Carr, looked far better than Colin Kaepernick. I'm telling you, I have friends who are 49er fans. Believe it or not, yes, 49er fans do have some friends. And they're all openly calling for the team not to pay Kaepernick the money on the unguaranteed portion of his new contract. Right? They're frustrated. They're looking at college quarterbacks, people like Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston. And they're saying, hey, given that some of the teams who are likely to pick early in the draft, Jacksonville Jaguars, for example, already have quarterbacks, why don't the Niners make a trade or do something to try to get a crack at these new quarterbacks? Right? Forget how good the team was opening day. When you see a team like this, where the head coach is on the way out, where veteran players are quietly disgruntled. Understand, Vernon Davis held out for more money in training camp. Right? then there's no telling as to whether San Francisco is even going to show up inspired to play against Arizona who would have right the top seed in the NFC at risk if they were to beat St. Louis and if something were to happen right to uh, the Seattle Seahawks. So think about it. Right, let's talk about the AFC for a second, right? These are the kind of angles we want to exploit. You know what? What's Denver doing? Being favored ahead of the New England Patriots. You understand that the Patriots already beat Denver. Isn't Denver so hopelessly overrated that they were actually favored against New England in New England? A game in which New England came out and dispatched them. Now, even after that game, you're telling me that Denver still favored over New England in the AFC? What am I missing? Folks, take a hard look at recent Denver Bronco box scores. Right? Why are they handing off the ball so much? Peyton Manning's an older quarterback. Right? Guys like Greg Cosell, who break down NFL film, openly say that Manning has an arm that's average to below average right now. Yesterday's box score, Manning, no touchdown passes, two picks. 
right? Are you sure he's not at the tail end of his career where his arm strength is becoming an issue in bad weather? Right? How could you look at Denver with C.J. Anderson? I know he's looked good, right? With Peyton Manning now having his touchdown streak snapped, and reach the conclusion that they're the better team over the Patriots, who, in my opinion, right now, not only have the better quarterback, right, with the stronger arm, but let's be real here. The Patriots have the better running backs, don't they? I mean, if you're buying into this new resurgent Denver Bronco rushing game, well, look at the Patriots, right? You got LeGarrette Blunt. You got Shane Vereen. You got Jonas Gray. You got Brandon Bolden. You have depth. You have running backs like Vereen who can run pass patterns. Stretch the defense that way. Then you have bruisers like Blunt and Gray who can run between the tackles. Who can run right up the A-gap on the defense. Right? Also, you know, look. I know Denver's defense has been resurgent, right? Chris Harris, Demarcus Ware, Vaughn Miller, okay, good for them, right? But hasn't the Patriots on defense also been resurgent? Given the fact that if the Patriots win their next three games, they're the top seed in the AFC. I see no reason other than fan loyalty and lunacy as to why the Denver Broncos would be favored ahead of the New England Patriots. Right? Didn't the uh, Dolphins just lose a game? Didn't the Bills just lose a game? You know, haven't the Patriots, who beat San Diego yesterday, firmly entrenched themselves atop of their division? Don't they have all the tiebreakers when you consider them against Denver, them against Indy? Haven't they beaten Denver and Indy? Don't they have the tiebreakers in the conference? So let's just say of these four teams, Green Bay, Denver, Patriots, Seattle, right? Whoever you think's the strongest team, don't bet that way. Bet the situation. Hey, I love Aaron Rodgers as much as the next guy. There's a team ahead of him right now in the NFC's rankings, right? Hey, I believe personally Seattle's the best team in the NFC. Hey, right now if the season ends today, they're a wild card. Right? Why is betting on either Green Bay or Seattle a better deal than, let's say, betting on the New England Patriots? Understand, with Seattle, I'm getting a plus 450. With the Patriots, I'm getting a plus 400. I'm getting a quarterback who lives in Super Bowls. I'm getting a head coach who lives in Super Bowls. I'm getting a team who, if they win three games, they're the top seed in the conference, right? Playing out of a town where it can get cold and windy in January, right? Let's think through the playoffs. It can get cold and windy in January. I know Tom Brady can handle that. At this stage, can Peyton Manning? Why should I believe that if Denver goes to New England in the playoffs, that Denver is going to have any success? Isn't a troubling part of the Peyton Manning legacy, the fact that he doesn't do that well in the playoffs? Now, if Peyton Manning doesn't do as well in the playoffs as Tom Brady, and Tom Brady's on the higher-seeded team, you got to be kidding me that I'm supposed to be getting shorter odds taking the Broncos rather than the Patriots. So let's just say this. Of these four teams, Seattle, New England, Denver, and Green Bay, at these odds, right, plus 450, plus 400, plus 375, plus 350, the best value on the board as I see it are the New England Patriots. Right? They have the tiebreakers. They have the higher seeding right now, and Lord knows they have the postseason experience <laughs> and the postseason success. They even have a revenge motive, right? They're the team that lost to Denver in Denver in the playoffs last year, right? They don't want to be playing no game in Denver in the playoffs, right? 
They'll have Denver come to them. Folks, you'll lose a lot of money if you spend a lot of time betting against Tom Brady in the playoffs in New England. Right? Now, all of that said, I like the Patriots. Right? At these odds. As the best play out of these four teams. Let me go further, though. Right? You know, I like Green Bay. I'm a big Aaron Rodgers fan. I'm a Pac-12 guy. Rodgers played in the Bay Area. He was a Berkeley guy. He was a dominant quarterback then. Should have been the top quarterback taken the year he came out of college. Here's the problem, though. Aren't you concerned by the gap? And it's a gap between Green Bay's defense and the Seattle Seahawks defense. Isn't there a gap there? Aren't you also concerned that these Seahawks, mentally, are the kind of team that can show up in San Francisco on Thanksgiving Day? Let's just talk about their two biggest games of this season. They show up in San Francisco on Thanksgiving Day. They take out the San Francisco 49ers. Take them out, right? San Fran ends that game with three points. Right, Richard Sherman goes from harassing Colin Kaepernick in last year's NFC Championship game to harassing him and getting two picks. Right, the first regular season game the teams face off after that. Think about it. Then, of course, this Seattle team travels across country, takes on the NFC East leading Philadelphia Eagles. This is right after the Eagles had taken out the Dallas Cowboys. Think about it. Right, in Dallas. Right, the Eagles were clicking on all cylinders, it looked like. I would argue that Eagle victory over the Cowboys might be their best game all season. You know the rest. Seattle goes into Philly. They take out the Eagles by double digits in Philly. I'll tell you what, when you see a team beating their rivals in their rival's house in back-to-back -back games, right? When you see a team that has experience in the playoffs, keep in mind, Seattle made the playoffs the year before they won the Super Bowl. Keep in mind, it was a younger Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks who actually beat the Redskins in Washington, in the playoffs, two years ago. Right? They follow that up, by the way, by leading against the Atlanta Falcons until the Falcons' last drive. The next game in Atlanta at a time when Matt Ryan was viewed as hard to beat at home. Well, now Seattle's just gotten better. The guys have rings on their fingers, right? And all I'm saying is while they started slow, now they're taking out teams that are highly regarded, right? Teams that are above 500, right? Both the Niners and Eagles were above 500 when they recently lost to Seattle, right? So my point is simply this. I know Aaron Rodgers is hard to beat in Green Bay. I know Seattle got out the gate slowly and might have to actually be on the road in the playoffs. I understand all that. But isn't there a gap defensively between the Packers and the Seahawks? I would argue that the defensive gap between those two teams is bigger than any offensive gap between the Packers and the Seahawks. Right? I would argue, too, that mentally, right, mentally, the Seahawks are just a tougher team, right? They won a very tough NFC Championship game last year, then blew out Peyton Manning. That Super Bowl wasn't even competitive. Right here in the Bay Area, people can't shake the visual this year. It's a recent visual of Richard Sherman eating turkey. 
on the San Francisco logo after Seattle took out the 49ers on Thanksgiving Day. Right? This is a mentally tough team. I don't care where they're seated. If they're in the playoffs, they're going to be dangerous. They've already beaten teams on the road in the playoffs. Right? Really, that was the last great RG3 moment in D.C. Right? RG3 gets Washington to the playoffs his rookie year. And then, of course, Russell Wilson lays waste to them. Right? In fact, that's a deep game. You know, if you recall it, Seattle turns on the gas late and it's over. Right? So just keep an eye on how this whole thing shakes out. Right? Just understand situationally. Right now, Seattle doesn't lead their division. In my opinion, it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to take out the 49ers next week, in part because the owner has already kneecapped the head coach and offensive coordinator by allowing family members and by he himself criticizing the effort of the team. Right? Understand, on a team with veterans, right? Justin Smith's talking about retiring. Right? Vernon Davis is on his best behavior these days, but he's got to be wondering why he's not getting the football. Let me just say this. I can't even imagine how good Vernon Davis's numbers would be if he were playing right now with Aaron Rodgers. Right? Put Vernon Davis opposite Rob Gronkowski on the New England Patriots, and Vernon Davis probably is in the Pro Bowl. Right? Vernon Davis knows he's still one of the fastest tight ends in the National Football League. He's not getting the ball. Colin Kaepernick simply puts not seeing the field. Right? So keep that in mind. But just know, of these four teams, Seattle, New England, Denver, and Green Bay, New England by far is in the best situation. Right? They are the top seed right now in the AFC. They don't have to earn it like Green Bay and Seattle. Right? They're the top seed in the AFC. Right? All they have to do is run the table. Winnable games. They have the tiebreaker over Denver, over Indy. Right? They have the experience. And unlike other teams in the league, like let's say San Diego, right? They have the weather that gives them an edge. Right? If it's windy, if it's cold, if it's snowing, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady look at each other and know they've been there, they've done that, they've won those games. Right? A lot of teams have come to New England. Peyton Manning, when he was a coach, and have folded up shop. Let's remember, when Peyton Manning got by New England on their way to winning the Super Bowl that year, that game was indoors in Indianapolis. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave your comments here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.